Fidget spinners are so cool. They just seem to go on and on forever and ever. But the truth is, they don't. They're actually being acted on by a force. We're going to talk about physics today in Isaac Newton's First Law of Motion on Science at Home with Mr. Hall. Isaac Newton was an English mathematician, physicist, astronomer, um, writer. Uh, he lived between the, the years 1642 and 1727, and he's considered to be one of the fathers of modern, modern day science. And his three laws of motion are what we understand today as the field of physics, which you'll take in high school as a science class. So we're going to talk about his first law of physics today. It's often called the law of inertia. It's very, very simple. An object that is standing still will not move unless it's acted on by a force. And an object that's moving will not stop moving unless it's acted on by a force. So a fidget spinner here, what forces are acting on this right now? Um, what do you think? Um, push and pull. There's a push, right? Is there anything that's acting against it? Is there anything that's trying to make it stop? Um, air. Air. So what does the air cause on it? It's an F word. Um, friction. Friction. So friction, it's not just friction from the air, it's friction from the, the, the things that are inside, the mechanisms, but they're made so to try to minimize that friction. So friction and another force that's acting on everything right now is gravity, right? Yep. So on Earth, friction and gravity and other forces try to stop things from moving. So we're going to use that to, to try to prove uh, Newton's first law of, of motion, which is the law of inertia. So objects at rest will stay at rest unless acted on by a force, and objects that are in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by a force. A couple of neat tricks you can do with stuff at home. So let's start off with uh, this uh, crisp $5 bill. It doesn't have to be a five. It doesn't even have to be money. It's just, uh, it can be any kind of paper that's loose. So we're going to take this paper, and Julian, I'm going to hold, I'm going to put some coins on here. I'm going to put some pennies on top of the paper, on top of this this box. So Julian, when I count to three, I want you here, to take your hand, fingers and touch and grab that, but don't pull it yet. When I count to three, I want you to pull it really hard. Ready? One, two, three. Yes, it worked perfectly. See that? Those coins were, they were sitting, they were in place. And they were being acted on by gravity. And they don't want to go anywhere unless they're acted on by a force that pushes or pulls them away. So when you pull this out from under it, there's not enough friction to prevent those pennies from continuing to stay where they were. So they stayed where they were, and then there was nothing to hold them up, and they dropped in. Our next demonstration involves, uh, it's the same kind of thing as the money, that Julian pulled the money, or uh, the, the $5 bill out from under the coins, and they fell in. Well, this time we got a little plastic ring, and I put a stack of six or seven pennies up here over this bottle. So, Leah, I'm going to ask you to put your finger in here and just move your finger out really fast and just rip that, that ring out of there whenever you're ready. Perfect. Nice job. So, same thing. If we could have shown that in slow motion, um, then you would have seen that Liam ripped the ring out and the coins fell straight down. Alright? So, there's a similar one that you can do with a card. So, I've got an Uno card over here. And I'm going to put a, a coin on top of the Uno card. And I'm going to make sure it's lined up exactly over the lid of the, of the bottle. And this may take a few times, but I'm going to go ahead and take my finger, and the same thing, I'm going to flick that Uno card out from under there. See? Again, it goes straight down because of Newton's law. So there wasn't enough friction between the coins and the surface of this card to move the coins with the card. So when I flung the card out, the coins just dropped right into the container. So let's step up the risk factor a little bit and use something that could make a real mess. This is a raw egg. See this boy? Yeah. So, for this one, I'm going to take a toilet paper tube 
and a cutting board. I'm going to set it up right directly over the glass with water in it. Okay? So, Julian, I want you to grab this, and when I say go, I want you to pull it towards you as fast as you can. Oh, let me make sure it's set up right. What if it cracks? Well, then we, that's all right. All righty? Three, two, one, go! Yes! It worked beautifully. You see that? So same thing, the egg fell into the water because Newton's law of motion, oh, that one's had a crack in it, I guess, but Newton's law of motion stated that it was sitting here, and when this stuff moved out of the way, it just fell right in. Let's take this up a notch, get another egg. For the last thing, and we'll just increase the size, we'll increase the size of, of the uh, experiment. So, we're going to use a bigger glass and a bigger roll, and Liam's going to do this one. Okay, so hold on. We don't know if this will work or not, because I didn't try this one beforehand. So, same principle, the egg is going to sit way up here. Now, this could be a total failure. We don't know. It'll work. What? <laughs> Guess we'll find out. All right. So ready? Three, two, one, go! Yes! Perfect. I wish I had that before, Madison. So Newton's first law of motion states that an object that is in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by a force, and an object that is at rest will stay at rest unless acted on by a force. So until next time, please subscribe and forward this to other people who might use it. And as always, science, science is all around us. It's all around us.